and welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. And on this continuing series on moving from Windows 10 or Mac over to Linux Mint, I wanted to talk about software that you can use in Linux Mint to replace the existing software that you use currently on Windows 10. Now, this is primarily software that I would think that most users would be interested in, meaning the general user. And so this is not really specific to a very specialized set of users. For example, if you are a designer who uses a lot of Adobe products, this might not be the video for you, or Linux Mint might not be for you if you are that specialized, okay? So if you have not seen this video already, my original video on how you can install Linux through a virtual machine on your Windows 10 or Mac device, you know, go ahead and look at the description below or I'll leave a link somewhere here where you could link to that particular video. Now with that being said, if you are already have your virtual machine up, I would suggest you start your Linux Mint virtual machine, which I've already done here. And I'm gonna go ahead and move over to this virtual machine. We're gonna go to full screen. Okay, now we are in the virtual machine. And the reason I'm doing it this way a lot of times is because I wanted to simulate what it would be if you were to install Linux Mint for the very first time. So if you ha are installing Linux Mint for the very first time, whatever I'm seeing, you would see the exact same thing. Okay, so uh, that's why I'm doing it that way. And so uh, with that being said, you know, sometimes things are slower through the virtual machine, but um, it shouldn't be too much slower. Now, before I begin talking about the software that you can use in Linux that replaces your existing software on Windows 10, I want to go over again how you would install software in Linux Mint, just as a refresher. Now, in Linux Mint and a lot of Linux distributions or operating systems, it's done through a software manager, okay? So, which means that this is very, very similar to an App Store or a Google Play Store. Now, whenever you do that, and I'll show you that again, whenever you go to your uh, administration, well, I'm going to have to put that first, administration and then software manager, it's going to ask for your password. So, this would be the password that you created at the beginning, okay? Now, uh, that's for security purposes, and um, there are a lot of people should be familiar with that. Now, in Linux Mint, it takes like a minute sometimes or two for the software manager to come up, um, which is uh, kind of annoying. Everything else is fast. And so uh, once that comes up, we'll be able to install and, and also remove software. And while well, that's coming up, I just wanted to show you again how I got there. So it's through administration and then right there through the software manager and there it is it came up okay and this is where you can install and remove software and let me just say one thing pretty much every single piece of software on Linux uh, which there are thousands of software it's free the majority of them are open source freely available software um, and but there are some in here that are paid and uh, it'll tell you that so uh, for example, if you wanted to install software, you could either go to the categories like I just did and then install the ones that you think would be interesting or you could do a search. Okay, In this case, I want to search for Chrome because Chrome is not installed uh, by default. Okay, You could always go to Google's website and install Chrome or if you want, you could also install the open source version of Chrome which uh, should be Chromium, okay? And I'm gonna show you how that works. So like I said, it might take a second because uh, it, it's just running through the virtual machine. And so here's the Chromium browser. You could just double click on it. And what it will do is it's gonna show you all the reviews for this particular software. It's also gonna show you information on what this is, okay? And how much space it's gonna take up. So for example, if I wanna start this Chromium browser, I'll just go ahead and click on install and then uh, it'll show you a progress bar down here and uh, it'll show you that it's installing uh, which makes sense now after this is installed it's going to show up on your programs menu and um, like I said uh, if this is 
uh, this software, if this is something that you uh, wanted to uninstall, uh, there are a couple ways that you can do that uh, as well. You know, once that's installing. And let me uh, minimize this real quick. Now, if you wanted to uninstall software, there is a couple ways you could do it. The easiest way to do it is if you go to your menu, okay, and then you go to the program that you want to remove. Um, you don't really do it like you do in Windows where you would go to add remove programs and then you would remove. Uh, in this case, you would simply go to the program you want to remove and then you would just click on it right here. Oops, sorry. You would actually right click it. That's not what I meant to do. So you go to your the program right here and then uh, you would right click it and see there's an option right there to uninstall really really easy you don't have to go through no add remove programs and whenever you right click you know there's always these secondary options that you could choose and uh, there it is it just came up Mozilla but let's see where we are with Chrome or in this case Chromium okay it still hasn't uninstalled yet hasn't installed completely yet so um, that's how you install and uninstall programs another another way you could do that is um, when you're here in your uh, program manager or your software manager if you've already installed it there's also a button that will appear that will allow you to uh, uninstall it but uh, my preferred method of doing that is you know to open up the programs and then to uh, uninstall I think that's a lot easier to do and uh, but yeah that's uh, still going so let's go ahead and um, move on to the actual programs that you would no use normally and that you could replace from Windows 10 so the very first program that I think a lot of people use um, it's going to be uh, Microsoft Office okay so it's probably no surprise that Microsoft Office is uh, not available in Linux although you know you could use the web version of it um, I think for a lot of people that is not an option when it comes to Linux Mint what is the option is LibreOffice now the great thing about LibreOffice is this is available on all platforms so whether you are on Windows 10 uh, or Mac um, it is available there so you could even start using it there now I will say that LibreOffice um, it is pretty much uh, very compatible with Microsoft Office however um, it is not 100 percent compatible which means that say you have a Microsoft Word file it would look and function pretty much the same as you would in Microsoft Office but it might not be exact you know some things like formatting uh, would not would be one of the things or maybe the fonts might not be exactly the same so if you are the type of person who uses Microsoft Office heavily and you need it 100 percent compatibility LibreOffice might not be the option for you however for the majority of people LibreOffice is excellent okay so in LibreOffice it has uh, different programs that are compatible and similar to Microsoft Office the first being is writer document this is compatible and similar to Microsoft Word next we have Cal which is uh, the same as PowerPoint I'm sorry not PowerPoint Excel now impress this is the same as PowerPoint and you also have a drawing program and um, I don't use these and a math formula and there's also base database which is uh, very similar to Microsoft uh, access okay however the main ones that I use I use writer which is the Microsoft uh, Word equivalent and as you can see it's very similar and I also use Cal uh, which is the uh, spreadsheet program so uh, you kind of get the idea there so that will replace your uh, Microsoft Office program and uh, see it uh, finished installing and there's a remove option right there I, I just wanted to show you that really quick and then I'll also there it is Chromium web browser okay so I'm gonna close that and uh, let's go back to the programs that we're using so LibreOffice is the first one okay that's your Microsoft Office replacement now the second program that is 
already installed by default is GIMP okay now if you are not familiar with GIMP is it's basically a open source version of Photoshop okay so if you're a person who does a lot of design uh, most people are going to use an Adobe product but a lot of people don't want to pay that amount of money so a lot of people use GIMP and uh, just like LibreOffice GIMP is available on all platforms Windows Mac and Linux and so if you are already used to using GIMP you should have no problems using it here so this is a very fully featured uh, media uh, graphics editing program so that's GIMP that's primarily for people who do a lot of image editing and design now another program that people are probably familiar with and will use is VLC media player so this is available on all platforms most people are familiar with this so if you do use a lot watch a lot of media uh, which most people do um, you don't have to worry about you know downloading this because it's already installed and if you are already using VOC very easy for you to transition over okay now those first three programs those are something that uh, I think nearly everybody uses you know LibreOffice everybody uses an office application of some type uh, GIMP a lot of people are gonna do some type of image editing and also VSC media player people watch audio and video so uh, that's definitely a must and speaking of audio a lot of people listen to music and so they have playlists and they might have podcasts that they use so there is a program that is already built in in Linux Mint to handle that and that's Banshee so uh, Banshee just think of it like your uh, iTunes app you know so this will allow you to you know edit all your audio files and even video files and radio programs but it also allows you to import lists uh, from other programs uh, one of which is iTunes so if you had a lot of iTunes specific stuff and I'm just showing you this because uh, it can handle it if you go down see uh, Banshee supports iTunes as well and also Windows playlists so that's very important for people who have a lot of a uh, media uh, or playlist that they don't want to have to recreate okay and if you also had podcasts uh, you could also import those as well so that is Banshee that is your complete media player audio it's primarily audio but it does other things as you can see so you already have a media player built in and another thing that's already built in is a, a CD DVD burner that is Bracero okay now I do understand that a lot of new laptops machines now they don't have a drive an optical drive but this is still uh, you know for a lot of people this is very important to have and so right here Bracero uh, you could you know copy uh, DVDs create DVDs CDs you know and so you could also create your own uh, CD projects and um, there's other features here as well but it's already built in and um, you know you don't have to uh, pay for it or even download it because it's already built in so that is Bracero and um, another thing that a lot of people use in Windows 10 is uh, some type of email management program and a lot of people who do that is uh, they're going to be using Microsoft Outlook however in Linux Mint uh, one that I use is Thunderbird I don't have it set up here obviously so Thunderbird is a complete email management program uh, which is very similar to Microsoft Outlook but I actually like it a lot better and you know it'll handle all types of uh, email programs and so if you're the type of person who uh, has a lot of email uh, accounts um, this is an excellent program and uh, what I like about this one uh, just like LibreOffice GIMP and VOC media player this is available on all platforms and so if you are already using Thunderbird in Windows 10 uh, you should be right at home using it here so that's Thunderbird already built into Linux Mint so you don't have to download and install it and then another program that another type of program that I don't think many people think about but they probably use a lot is a, a PDF viewer okay and uh, Linux Mint already has one built in it's called document viewer and so if you had 
you know PDF files which a lot of people still use you don't have to go download a PDF reader okay uh, like Adobe and so forth and what's great about uh, Linux Mint is pretty much any program that you're using uh, you could export it as a PDF file and this is uh, primarily relevant if you're using you know the LibreOffice you know for Microsoft Word documents and so forth so already installed very nice feature to have so those are the primary programs that are already installed uh, when you are using Linux Mint and so that will actually cover a lot of people you know a lot of people use uh, those initial programs or type of programs that I talked about a little bit earlier which means that you know when you're transitioning from Windows 10 to Linux Mint you know it'll be a lot easier for you because there are types of programs that you are already using okay so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, log off of here and um, now I'm gonna talk about programs that are not installed by default and they are programs that I think that are useful but that you can also download and use for free so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, close this down at least my virtual machine and I'm gonna show you the ones that I already have installed that I use on my machine and that I think would be a very useful um, and uh, also uh, very cost effective too because some of these programs in Windows 10 these type of programs that I'm going to talk about they cost a lot of money okay but in Linux they're free so um, okay I'm gonna, I just shut down my virtual machine let's close that down so all of these programs you could actually go to your uh, software manager uh, as I just showed you a little earlier you could go to administration software manager and you could install these programs from there. The very first program that I wanted to talk about is OpenShot. Um, and what OpenShot is, is it's a very basic, but also very powerful video editor. This is the primary video editor that I use um, when I'm editing my videos in Linux Mint. Very powerful program. And you know, in, in uh, Windows 10, having a very powerful free uh, video editing program it's hard to find a lot of them you have to pay for or they have ads and so forth but in Linux Mint you don't have to do that so OpenShot is the one I prefer and that's actually the one that I use okay so um, a lot of other people might use another video editing program called Kden Live but I prefer OpenShot okay so that's for video editing another program that I think a lot of people would use um, is a screen recording software now in Windows there's one called Camtasia um, it's okay but you know uh, once again you know there's the, the paid component and uh, there's also ads and so forth okay in uh, Linux Mint or in Linux my favorite screen recorder the best one by far is Simple Screen Recorder this is an excellent screen recorder and it is free okay another one that I recommend that you install uh, is audacity now audacity it is available on you know uh, Windows and Mac would once again feel right at home here and audacity it is an audio editing program and so this is really useful if you're doing a lot of media uh, which I do as well and the final program in Linux Mint that I definitely think you should install is MAME <laughs> so you know that I love emulators and I'll probably do another episode specific to uh, MAME but this is uh, a must if you are a retro gamer so that is uh, it for all the programs that I think would be very useful and that would be relevant to people switching from Windows 10 um, and even to uh, from Mac to some extent but this is primarily for people who are switching over to uh, you know from Windows 10 to Linux Mint so all the software that I talked about today you know, all of it is free uh, pretty much every single one of them um, actually all of them they're all open source and so which means that you know it is community driven and more than likely uh, they're gonna be free forever okay so um, if you had any ideas or comments on this particular episode or if there's any other type of software that you were interested in, like for example if you had uh, a programming software that you use in Windows 10 and you wanted to know if it's available in Linux Mint you know be sure and uh, put your comments there below and I'll see if there is a compatible or similar version of that available in Linux 
And, um, you know, as always, if, you know, you had any other questions that you wanted to shoot to me quickly, uh, just remember that I am on Snapchat at Geek Outdoors. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on another uh, Windows 10 replacement episode. Thanks for checking out this episode. And as always, if you like these videos, be sure to click on the subscribe button. And for full written content, audio content, and additional geek stuff, head over to geekoutdoors.com. And I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.